What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Baby Bunny's three-week-old live stream. We have Storm's five three-week-old Hollow Knot Bunnies. Hey guys, can you hear me okay? Welcome to a Tuesday live stream. Brought the baby bunnies in the house today. Hopefully you can see this good quality. Good, glad you can hear me, thanks. How is everybody doing today? I'm hoping to set this camera up and just leave it for as long as my Wi-Fi will hold up here. So just sit back and relax and enjoy the baby bunnies playing. Hey guys, welcome. As I mentioned before, I brought the baby bunnies in the house today and this is kind of their nap time, so I'm not sure how active they will be, but I will keep this camera up, hopefully for at least a couple hours. It will depend on our Wi-Fi. I set the stream to, I think, 480p or 780p quality, 720 I mean. So hopefully it's not too glitchy. 
and that the babies will be active for you guys to enjoy. Thanks so much for joining. Those of you who are supposed to be working or at school, <laughs> appreciate everybody spending their time here. I'm not gonna be able to answer all of your questions because I'm probably not going to be sitting here the entire time, but I thought you just might like to enjoy watching the baby bunnies at your leisure. For those of you who joined the live stream, oh, I've had one last week, maybe two last week. How do you think the quality compares today? Because I did set it to a lower quality, hoping that it wouldn't be glitchy. It's good? Good. I'm glad you could see it okay. If you didn't tune in to the live stream that I had on Saturday, I believe, I did share the names of the babies. So if you missed it, I'll quickly go over their names. And they're really silly names, but we're going with a food theme here. And they're all... <laughs> Let's see if I can grab one. Whoa. So the little broken cream here... That is omelet, breakfast food theme. Oops. <laughs> the little chestnut, this is hash brown. Super fat, this one's the biggest. Really good kisser. We have omelet and hash brown. The littlest orange here is bento like a little bento box because this one is so tiny but has no fear this one is super fast little bento and then the other orange is cheese whiz so this is cheese whiz cheese whiz is the bigger orange longer ears they're about ready to lop and then the little opal is tuna like a tuna fish if i can find her nope that's not it she's somewhere in here <laughs> oh my goodness and this is little tuna which is an opal like dad hi tuna <laughs> tuna and bento the little orange are the smallest They are three weeks old on Sunday. So 16 days old, or uh, 23. Yep, it's morning here. It's, well, actually it's getting close to noon. It's a little bit after 11 o'clock in the morning here in Ohio. Where's everybody from? Go ahead and let me know in chat. Netherlands, UK. It's probably later in the day for you guys. Welcome. Oh, Ohio. Lorraine, Ohio. Yeah, you're pretty close. Pakistan? That's really far. Sheesh. Canada. My next rabbit room tour. I don't know. That has been on my to-do list, but they're very time intensive. 
So I have to be in the right mood and have a lot of time to work on those. Right now the baby bunnies have been taking my focus. Eventually, I'll get to it. <laughs> It's nighttime for you guys? Wow. Germany. Guten Tag. You've seen me at the vet, Maria? It's quite possible. Unfortunately, I've been there quite a bit. Hash Brown was just drinking a bit of water. They do have hay in their litter box over there, and then they have a little saucer of water. They had lots of pellets this morning and Storm, their mom, fed them, so hay and water is fine for them. They're probably going to be sleeping here shortly. I don't know if you can see it, Hash Brown is about ready to escape. No kitty. I'm not going to move my cat. <laughs> Tubby, no. No kitty. I don't trust my cat around the bunny, so I gotta keep moving him. Paisley's okay. She would be okay with the bunnies, but she's sleeping upstairs. And Maria, if it was last summer, it was probably for Timmy. I don't know if you remember uh, what was going on with Timmy, and he had to have surgery, and he didn't make it. But I was up at the vet a lot over the summer for that. And I think Sunny Jim went up there last summer, too. <laughs> so kind of a frequent flyer at the vet, and it's so expensive every time we go. So now they're being really playful. These little toys that you see here and this little solar ball that they're playing with, those are from Little Beast Treats. It's a really great shop for small animals, bunnies, chinchillas, guinea pigs, lots of fun little chew toys at Little Beast Treats. So check them out. Oh, Morgan, you've been here for a long time. Wow. Well, I think it might have been Camilla that you're talking about. Anna was never born here, but her daughter Camilla was born on New Year's Eve, I believe, in 2015. And we have an escapee. i got to go get Cheese Whiz. <laughs> Cheese Whiz? What are you doing? Oh, my goodness. I guess I can't leave them alone. <laughs> I have another one of these fences on order. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Cheese whiz. You're naughty. You're naughty, baby. Here, what if we do this? <laughs> oh my goodness. Cheese whiz is an escape artist. Yeah, I miss Camilla too, a lot. I still have her son and her daughter, but it's not the same. You know, as much as we can try to replace a bunny, it, it never is a true replacement. But I try to learn what makes each bunny special and appreciate that. But there truly are no two bunnies that are alike. <laughs> Cheese wizard. <laughs> this is currently, I believe, a 15 inch exercise pen, and I have another one on order so I can enlarge it and maybe block off the hearth because they're going to escape. This would not work for an adult bunny, but it's fine for the babies. The only place they're going to hop over is probably the hearth. I 
I know, they've grown a lot. It, they grow so fast. It is ridiculous. And they're eating a lot of pellets and hay on their own now, which it takes a lot of burden off their mom. Storm was eating a ton during the first couple weeks when she was the only one feeding the babies. She was eating so much and pooping so much, but she's definitely backed off. <laughs> These are Holland Lop Bunnies. Three weeks old. 23 days to be exact. You can see them a little bit better now. Oh, you're gonna name your buddy Bunny Camilla. That's cute, Lily. The mom of these guys is Storm, my blue-eyed white doe, and the dad is Moose. He is a solid opal buck. Their ears are already starting to lop, if you take a look at them, especially a um, little Bento. Here. Bento. So look at Bento's ears are starting to lop. Cheese Whiz's ears are a little bit bigger. <laughs> They're starting to lop. And the shorter the ears, they tend to lop later than the longer ears. So it varies. It'll probably happen in the next one to two, three weeks. I don't have any other litters coming up. And this is actually the first litter I've had this year and I haven't had one since last September. I only have a few litters per year. They're a lot of work and I have to make sure they go to 
as responsible of homes as possible, so I just have a few litters per year. I have seven adult bunnies right now. Try to keep it manageable. Do it, cheese whiz. That's probably a bad place to put that. <laughs> okay, we can't put that there. We're gonna have to do some rearranging here. No, 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 Bento. Cash Brown's using the potty. Put their water over here. There you go, guys. Yes, Tina, it is a lot of work to care for my bunnies. It's a full-time job. Twice a day, at the minimum, I feed and clean. And if the weather is nice, I'm back and forth <laughs> putting bunnies inside, outside, giving them exercise. And that's 365 days a year. I don't take vacations because it's hard to find somebody responsible enough and want, that wants to take on caring for bunnies twice a day. So yeah, it's a lot of work. And especially because the enclosures the little condos I have for the bunnies are solid floor, so I've got litter boxes to clean, I've got poop to vacuum up, lots of hay to sweep up. So it's an extreme commitment and there's not much money in it. That's where the videos come in. The videos help to pay for food and vet bills. Because the only way to make a lot of money with rabbits is to breed a ton of them and use low quality food, no litter training. And you know, I, I really try to just breed very small scale, just a few litters per year and find them good, high quality homes. These guys are not available for adoption just yet. I may or may not keep one, I'm not sure. I still am not completely confident about the genders. They do seem to look like females to me, which statistically they all five shouldn't be. So I still have to keep checking them. Got to wait till I take my contacts out. My old eyes can see them better. That little bento is really trying to climb up over there. <laughs> I tell you, bento has no fear. Is the smallest bunny, but no fear. And little. Cheese whiz is, oh my goodness, there, there she goes again. No kitty. Cheese whiz, what are we gonna do with you, huh? How are we gonna keep you guys in? No kitty cat. What if we put this there? That might deter you, maybe. <laughs> broken one is a broken cream. Come here. <laughs> the fuzziest of them all. Hi. This one also pretty much has no fear. Hi, so fluffy. Come here. Oh, I gotta grab my cat, Ivan. 
Leave those bunnies alone. I do have a video on trimming a bunny's nails, yeah. I haven't trimmed their nails yet. They're so teeny tiny, there's not much to trim. But it definitely helps to have two people when you trim a bunny's nails and wrap them in a light towel, kind of make a bunny burrito. Yeah, you guys see Ivan in the background. I don't trust him, so I've got to watch him if he's around the bunnies. He's usually pretty scared of them, but he's looking kind of interested right now, so I don't trust him. Those of you who are fans of the channel probably remember my white cat Paisley. She is has odd eyes. She has a blue eye and a green eye. She's really good with the bunnies. All she wants is to eat the hay, which she later barfs up. <laughs> it's pretty gross. She's sleeping upstairs on my son's bed, so I'm not going to go wake her up because she doesn't hurt the bunnies, but she's a bit of a pain to keep away from the hay. So until I can get a another exercise pen to keep her out, yeah, I'd rather her not be down here, but I still have her. There's two cats inside and fish. I just don't trust the other cat with the bunnies. Come here, Edward. Victoria, check out my website. The link should be in the description below. It's ohiohollandlops.com and I have a blog article and a page about bonding rabbits. So just go to my website and search for bonding rabbits. I do have some information.
If you guys like this type of content and you want me to do more live bunny cam live streams, please hit that like button. That really helps to support the channel and let me know what types of videos that you are interested in. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications so that you don't miss out the beginning of the next live stream or video. I've never had a problem petting or handling my does before or after giving birth. No, they, they still care for the babies. You have to check the babies and make sure that they're getting fed, that they don't have clogs on their bottom area, that they're all alive. I don't bother the does when they are giving birth, but before and after, yes. And they're very used to me handling them. so. They don't mind for the most part. Oh, Nicole, the Midwest Bun Fest? Probably not. Like I said, I really don't go on vacations or anywhere because I'm home taking care of the bunnies most of the time, at least twice a day, if not more. If they do a virtual Bun Fest like they did this year, there was a virtual Midwest Bun Fest, for those of you who don't know, had some fantastic education educational classes online so if they do that again then yes I probably will attend but if it's in person probably not Flakes was asking, can I make a video on how to pick up a rabbit? I don't really have a video like that, but I've given tips before. You basically just want to make sure, and whether it's big or small, one hand under the legs and armpits, another hand around the bottom, and scoop it towards your chest. You can even kind of hold the bunny like a football and hide their eyes underneath your armpit because if they see how high they are up off of the ground, they kind of freak out. So always two hands and scoop them and kind of push them against your forearm and then bring them to your chest. If you hold them securely, they freak out way less than if you hold them loosely. And whenever you're putting your bunny down, here's another tip. All right, so say I'm putting my bunny back in an exercise pen or enclosure, whatever, put them in backwards like this, because if you put them in frontwards, they will leap off of you and possibly hurt themselves or you. So just a couple tips about handling bunnies. I might have to move this because they're all huddled. Hey Vivian, thanks for joining us from Ohio. OH. <laughs> Here's the little guy. This is Bento. Bento's ears are starting to lop already which is surprising because usually the ones with the smaller ears lop later. And I'm not certain on genders. A lot of them, if not all, look like little does, little females, so I just kind of call them all she 
for her. So Bento is a solid orange. See the little teeth chomps? It's like bunny purring. If you're petting your bunny, usually on the head, giving them massages and they chomp their teeth. It's like bunny purrs. They're, they're happy. So Bento is the smallest, and as I mentioned earlier, she is crazy. She has no fear. She zooms everywhere. She jumps everywhere. She does not seem to know her size. It kind of reminds me of a Jack Russell Terrier in the dog world. They will tackle just about anything, despite their small stature. Bento's just gonna go to sleep. <laughs> hash brown, I don't know if you can see hash browns looking for a way out. And then the other little one is the opal. <laughs> Here's the other little guy girl. <laughs> That's a little opal. And hash brown is the biggest. Hash brown and cheese whiz are the biggest. Little white tummy. This is the typical wild rabbit color. This is chestnut. Most dominant genetically. The color genetics is the chestnut. And then little omelet back here is a broken cream. It's a little bit more of a dull color than the orange. That's cream. <laughs> Welcome. Happy Tuesday morning, Tuesday night. Maybe even Wednesday morning, depending on where you are. Thanks for joining us, guys. I was planning on just setting up the camera and then leaving it, but the fact that the bunnies are jumping out <laughs> and my cat Ivan, who I don't trust with the bunnies, is just outside the pen here. I don't think I can leave them alone. I can't answer all of your questions, but I will be able to get to a few. Otherwise, I'm just going to try to shut up and let you enjoy the bunnies. Oh my goodness. Nipster with the two bucks. Thanks so much for the super chat. Appreciate it. Love the little gray one with the white tail. Well, for a super chat, I will go get that one. That's an opal. It's an opal. And they got little white tummies. You might start kissing my finger. Oh, yeah. Super cute. The broken cream is named omelet. The two oranges are bento and cheese whiz. The little opal is tuna, like the tuna fish, which are kind of a gray color. I know that from watching Wicked, Wicked Tuna on TV. And the little chestnut is hash brown. For my first live stream, somebody thought hash brown was a good name. So I kind of went with the food theme based off of hash brown. I'm not sure if they'll binky right now. There's a couple who are active, but it's kind of nap time for rabbits right now. They're most active in the morning and then late afternoon, early evening. 
I should have a live stream in the evening, but my family's here not only being noisy, but also using the internet. So I'm not sure if we have enough bandwidth. As I've mentioned in other streams, we have really poor internet out here. And even though it's the best we can get, we have a large tower installed on our barn, but we still can only get three megabits upload. So that's why this stream's only 480p. That's the best quality I can get consistently. So yeah, but I have done some morning streams. And as they get older, they will play for longer before they tuck her out. They're all, they're all cleaning each other back there. Andrew, is Starlink one of those satellite internet services? I think it may be in test phase in my area, if I'm correct. I'm concerned with latency, especially I do a bit of gaming, so I need something that has low latency and doesn't throttle or slow down the speed the more we use, because we use a lot of data. What we have now is a local wireless. It's not a complete satellite, but we have to get above the trees for it to work. Ivan keeps getting closer and closer. I don't know if you can see him in the background. Anna, yeah, losing a rabbit, it's really difficult. Tubby, you stay away, Ivan. Um, honestly, it gets easier day by day, but you never completely get over it. It helps to have, you know, pictures that you keep looking at, reminding yourself of your bunny. But yeah, it, it's it's difficult to lose any pet. Sometimes it hits harder than losing an acquaintance and a, a human acquaintance because they do become like family members. Yeah, Ivan, I don't trust Ivan. You see how he's slinking around out here? I just don't trust him. I normally don't call him Ivan. He's kind of big, so I call him Tubby. So t he's known by Tubby or my husband calls him rat face. <laughs> so we rarely call him Ivan. I keep putting him in his bed and he keeps getting up and wanting to look at the rabbits. You be good, Ivan. Yeah, he is chunky. <laughs> That's why I can't leave the stream alone, unless he's in a different room. Toby, yeah.
<laughs> Glad you enjoyed the stream, Nipster, and thanks again for the super chat. Ivan finally gave up and is sitting over there by the sliding doors by the deck and looking outside. So hopefully he'll leave the bunnies alone. So I'm gonna go pick up some poo balls. up the poop. Baby poop is so tiny. Little baby bunny poops. The bunny who's running around, the little broken cream, the white and cream one, that one is omelet. The two oranges are cheese Whiz, that's the bigger one, and the little orange is bento, like a bento box, because he's so tiny. She's so tiny. <laughs> the chestnut is hash brown, and then the little gray opal is tuna. In case you can't tell, I like food. <laughs> here in Ohio, Northern Ohio. Bellevue, Ohio. Kate, you're not that far from me. Saskatchewan. I always think that's the coolest name, Saskatchewan. I bet it's a real bummer to have to write out, but it's a cool name. Is it cold up in Saskatchewan right now, Laura? UK people. No, Kate, Bellevue is actually probably mm, 45 minutes away. That's fairly close. You're in the middle of a blizzard? Wow. We've been really lucky. We had, I think it was April Fool's, April 1st, we had snow, a couple inches of snow, but ever since then it's been pretty nice in the 60s Fahrenheit. It's nice and sunny today. The trees don't quite have their leaves yet, so I can't let the adult bunnies out in their exercise pens until later afternoon. Hang on. That's 
scared the bunny. <laughs> I got a clock right up here if you couldn't hear the ticking. But yeah, it, I have to wait for the trees to get their leaves. Until then, the bunnies can't go outside until the afternoon because they, they need some shade. The sun is rough on bunnies when it's warmer like this. Territorial. Each bunny definitely has his or her own personality, and if they're not spayed or neutered, their innate territorial drive can be intensified. So you really need to get those hormones under control to help to see your bunny's true personality. And certainly, any any who is not spayed or neutered can become territorial. Some can become aggressive. No matter how much interaction and socialization they've had. But spaying and neutering definitely helps a lot. And if you ever have a bunny who charges at you or tries to nip you, I would suggest, and I'm not a vet, but this is based on experience and suggestions I've heard from others, is push their head down gently but firmly and say no, you know, very abrupt no, and let them know that you're not going to put up with it. Because if you back away from that, that's what they want, and then they will continue that behavior. So spaying and neutering, definitely my number one recommendation if you have an aggressive bunny. But then hold hold your own, you know, press their head down gently but firmly and tell them no. Don't back away. If you have a bunny who doesn't like their territory um, invaded, then put your bunny in a different area when you are cleaning their enclosure. That will help keep their stress level at a minimum and then you won't have to worry about that. But like I said, each bunny is very different. You know, I could have a bunny out of this litter who ends up not being the most easy to handle despite having received the same treatment and socialization. So it really it really depends on just the luck of the draw and their prey instinct. If you have a bunny with a higher prey instinct, they are going to want to interact with humans less and less. And a lot of bunnies really don't like being picked up. Sit with your bunny in a small area and let them come to you. They're not like cats or dogs that will just sit in your lap and be cuddly animals for the, for the most part. There are some few who will do that. But a lot of the times, if they do become a lap bunny, it's on their own terms when they want to sit in your lap. A lot of people, I think, have misconceptions about rabbits and they don't understand that they really are prey animals. They're fragile, delicate creatures. They can have a lot of GI issues sensitivities, and they may not interact with you how you want them to interact with you. Spaying and neutering and a lot of gentle, consistent, patient interaction with them, that's your best chance at having the most lovable bunny that you can. Sorry, that was long-winded. <laughs> They're probably just going to sleep here in a huddle for quite a while. Oh, Hop Turret, that's a cute name, Vivian. <laughs> if you hear birds in the background, those are our guineas. They're not in the room. It sounds like they are. <laughs> They're really loud birds. 
that just wander around outside and eat bugs. And they're noisy. Yeah, some of their ears are starting to lop already. Little Bento is the smallest and her ears are starting to lop, which is surprising. And then Cheese Whizzes are starting to lop as well. They're more airplaning. In the next few days and weeks, the others should lop, although some might always airplane. Yeah, there are two in the middle. Hashbone and Tuna are kind of in the middle of the pile. That's how they sleep all the time. They're not hurting each other. All that fur is pretty fluffy. They might get hot, and if they get hot, they can move out here. to learn the color genetics of rabbits because you need to know the parents genetics and take a look at their pedigree and try to figure out the genotype of the sire and the dam, the, both the parents, and that will help you determine the colors that you might get in the litter. Because if there are hidden recessive genes that you don't see that's not displayed in the phenotype or the color of the bunny, you can have all these different strange colors pop up. I mean, take a look at this litter. We have opal, which is like that, but the other three are not like either parent. And in this case, Storm is a blue-eyed white, and that's masking what she truly is. But it, recessive genes can make different colors happen. So if you learn the color genetics and can look at the pedigrees and start to decipher what the genotypes of the parents might be, that will give you the best idea of what the offspring you might have. Did we lose the stream? Nope. And secondly, I have to say it, <laughs> I get on my soapbox here. Just be careful when you're breeding because you it can be very hard to find good homes for the bunnies. I'm thankful that I have a large audience. <laughs> that I can pull from to find good homes from the bunnies. But that can be really hard, especially when you're first starting out and there is not much money in it. And you don't want to inundate the shelters with bunnies 
who go to families who made a hasty decision and they realize that bunnies aren't typically snuggly like a cat and they're hard to take care of. There's a lot of work involved. They're not cheap to take to the vet. It can be difficult to find a vet. So I just caution those who are interested. Just make sure that you have a way to find good homes for the babies. I know some people are completely against the breeding of any pet and you are entitled to your opinion. But my opinion is that if you do so in a responsible way, small scale, then it, it can be done responsibly. But that's my opinion. You may have a different one. You're entitled to it. Yeah, I know the stream froze. I'm not sure why. It could be our Wi-Fi. Yeah, if you have people on a waiting list, that can help. I used to have a waiting list and I would have people email me every month just reiterating their interest in a bunny because the problem with a waiting list is a lot of times you have people flake out or they'll find a bunny elsewhere, they'll change their mind. And honestly, if they're gonna change their mind that quickly,